Hey everyone, it's Brad Warnerby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and say happy game day. It's finally game day with the NHL's return to play plan. Just in time for the beginning of August, right? Their chase for the Stanley Cup begins here. However, in this video, we'll talk about a draft pick that was still in play in question here. As if you call last year in the offseason, the Calgary Flames and them to the Oilers actually made a trade. We retraded Milan Lucic for, or we got Milan Lucic for James Neal. Essentially, that trade was uh, trading a way of contracts here, and you know, one side was looking for maybe more of a physical presence, and the other side was looking for another winger with some scoring potential here. And I definitely gave my initial reaction to that. I was actually stunned that. I said it, it actually happened because uh, it was the Flames and the Oilers. In theory, the trade worked, but I thought, you know, it's not going to happen between Flames and the Oilers, but it actually did. However, there was another condition that there was a third-round pick that could be going to the Calgary Flames here. And then the condition was is that if James Neal scored 21 goals and if Leon Lucic was 10 or more away from James Neal, and, uh, and then, of course, you know, the end of the world happened with the global pandemic with COVID-19. So uh, you had to wonder what was going to happen to that third round pick here. Well, actually, the NHL ruled yesterday that the Flames will indeed get that third round draft pick. As if you look at the hard numbers here, I mean, James Neal actually did only score 19 goals. However, we did not also play a full 82 game season here. I know James Neal also spent some time injured here while Milan Lucic only scored eight goals for the Calgary Flames. Well, when you look at where the stage of his career is right now for Milan Lucic, that's probably about what you would expect. I mean, he's still a shell of his former self where he was that big intimidating power forward that could still give you 30 goals and 60 points with his glory days with the Boston Bruins here. However, I guess if you prorate it, James Neal would have gotten 21 goals and Milan Lucic pots a goal here and there. But it uh, was a strange condition to put it in that trade because I know there's other trades that uh, always have traditional conditions in terms of uh, if a team makes it to, let's say, the playoffs. Well, how are you going to define playoffs here with the playing series? Or usually you got other conditions like if team goes to the third round, and player that was involved in trade plays in so many games, or if team wins the cup, you know what I mean with conditions here. But this was definitely unique on just performance this year. But the league actually ruled that the Flames will get a third round pick in that trade. However, the Oilers still have control on when the Calgary Flames will get that third round pick because the Oilers will get to decide at, not until the third round, according to the press release from the league here. In this upcoming draft, which won't happen until October, which here in Canada be Thanksgiving weekend on October 9th to 10th, originally was scheduled here, that the Oilers could decide this year or next year that the Flames will get that third round pick here. So then I guess the other piece of this video is, let's say, who won this trade a year out? I mean, i got to say right now, before factoring in this draft pick, which now the Flames will get, and of course it all depends on who the Calgary Flames draft and how that asset turns out here. And, you know, I made that trade retrospect with uh, the time when we traded Sam McCarthy away for James, Jason Weimer. And uh, we also gave the Tampa Bay Lightning, that's who we made the trade with, a third and a fifth round draft pick in exchange at the deadline there. And uh, one of those picks definitely turned out very well for the Tampa Bay Lightning, which I guess you could say, if you look in that video, eventually one of those assets you could say, bit us in the end when it really mattered the most. That's where you can see that video, but uh, I'm going to say right now it's an even trade because uh, Edmonton did at least get a few more goals on the wing here, but with James Neal gaining 19 goals here, I think he only had, I think he only got, I think, half of that in like in three games there. I mean, he had like 12 goals in October and I thought, well, we're going to get that third round pick, no problem. And then you know, then the real James Neal that we saw last year showed up and uh, took forever to score some goals because I kept monitoring how Neal was doing every Oilers game to 
Now we get that third round pick, knowing that Lucic wasn't likely going to even score 10. There were maybe 10 away, which it was close, but uh, I'm going to say for Edmonton's side, the good guys score. I, mean, I guess now we'll also determine for both players, now that we're in the play-in series, will Edmonton get, you know, some James Neal that I've seen in the playoffs here, and then the fact of the Calgary Flames here, there was a no-movement clause that Neal and Lucic had that uh, he actually had to agree to come, let's say, to the Calgary Flames. And I'm also going to say that there was also, he was probably also told that part of that condition is you're also going to waive your no-movement clause so you're not protected in the Seattle Kraken expansion draft. With the thinking that with his contract, I don't think the Kraken will pick him up, but you never know. But the other side here is that he was more of a physical presence, and we'll see. Because he did also look at the fact that Jeff Ward was at the time the associate coach, where usually players have more relationship with the assistant coaches and head coaches here. Well, both Jeff Ward and Emmy and Lucic have a history of their time in Boston. And in fact, they were both together on that team in 2011 that won the Stanley Cup here. So that's definitely something interesting to figure out here. But uh, I'm going to say definitely was an even trade. Looking at it, you're out here. I mean, I'm going to say the media would say we won the trade because Milan Lucic definitely has been a lot more approachable and a personality in the media there. And based on both the players that we've had here, especially with their time in Calgary, Milan Lucic definitely looks like more of a player that enjoys being in Calgary. Probably, I would say, with that big contract that he signed with Edmonton, Back in 2016, you can say that year is the year of the bad contracts here because uh, Louis Erickson signed that bad deal with the Vancouver Canucks there that they're pretty much stuck with. And heck, we even joined in on the bad party, contract party, by signing Troy Brower that we eventually bought him out. And I think the last I know with Troy Brower, I think he's barely a fourth liner with Florida now, which uh, he's just signed for a league minimum, which, you know, his game definitely went south really fast there, but uh, I mean, I would definitely say it was better than the rumor trade with the three-way that we would have got, to got Louis Erickson instead. Edmonton still would have gotten James Neal and Vancouver would have gotten Milan Lucic. I would have thought, you know, the Vancouver connection given that Lucic is from there and plays junior hockey with the uh, Vancouver Giants there, but uh, apparently Vancouver wasn't even close on considering that trade, but uh, like I say, what do you think of the league's ruling that they decide that the Calgary Flames will get that third round pick? And the Oilers will decide what year would be this year or next year. And I guess you ask, uh, you know, now you're out with this trade. I mean, there's still an expensive contract. I mean, let's uh, throw, not keep it, you know, sure, Cody here, it's still $5.5 million. But uh, if I had to spend $5.5 million on either a James Neal or a Milan Lucic, I'd rather spend on Milan Lucic, even though with the bonuses that's part of his contract, which makes it even tougher to buy out a barrier because it still counts against the cap here. You know, it's a bad contract where Edmonton's now excited where they're thinking, hmm, maybe if we have to buy him out, now it's only going to cost us $1.9 million and change for the next six years because there is some of that talked up there too. But uh, I doubt they're going to do that because of the expense. But, uh, you know... That's what it is, and then, I mean, Edmonton also did retain 12.5% of his salary here, so they're still paying $500,000 of that contract to have him on the books here to make this trade work. But, I mean, what do you think of the NHL ruling, and uh, what do you think of the trade a year out here? I guess we'll find out here in a, in a week how much value that uh, each player is going to evolve for the Alberta rivals here. I mean... I'm going to say Milan Lucic doesn't have much to uh, beat James Neal last year. I think he was definitely one of the worst forwards that was in the playoffs last year. And well, it's definitely made an example out of when we were down three games to one going home and he was scratched for Austin Zarnick, who Austin Zarnick wasn't playing. That was his first NHL playoff game in his career there. And James Neal has played over 100 games, has been to the finals twice. However, he's been on the wrong end of it. Both times with Nashville and Vegas here, while Milan Lucic, well, he's been the Faust twice, but he was on the winning side in 2011 and was on the wrong end of it in 2013 here. But, uh, you know, this is definitely going to be something to look at. And I did also get a comment, and I actually do work with a, another fan that actually 
that's what you hear about the only criticism of Lucic is the fact that uh, given that he used to play with Boston, he had that one year with Los Angeles, and then three years with Ebbetier, that the one criticism that you've heard from uh, me and Lucic is that if he's buddies with players on the other team there, that he would uh, let off a little on, uh, you know, during the game action there, and maybe that's where some people were critical in that crazy game there um, when we had that goalie fight. Well, where was Lucic? But, uh, you know, we'll see now. I mean, now it's playoff time and play in and we'll see what happens here. But uh, I just say, what do you think of everything? Just uh, stretch it out here. Just kind of both revisiting the trade and the, the fact that we will get that pick after all. Because uh, it was just a strange conditions on the trade here. And you were basing on performance on assuming a full season well, you know, I know you hear with other teams that have trades of conditions for this year. I heard that uh, the league would allow teams to renegotiate it when it comes to, let's say, making the playoffs or certain parts in the playoffs here, given what's happened, you know, with the uh, shutdown here. But this one was all based on performance of the full season here. So uh, that's my take on it here. So as I say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, all the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders. I mostly talk Calgary Sports on my channel here and recap games, talk trades, or whatever here. But I also do some personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and I also do share my experience with Tim on the road. I have support right here. So if it all sounds like the interest to watch to follow along with this Calgary Sports fans journey, you know what you need to do. Just make sure you like, like and subscribe. I also have my other social media links down in the description below there. So as I say here, go Flames go, and yes, it's game day. Finally, the play-in series all start today here, as, as of this recording here. And the run to the Stanley Cup, while it's much, much later, it's nice that it started here. And so far, things are looking good, and I will make a separate video talking about leagues and the return to play plans and how successful or unsuccessful they have been in terms of containing this pandemic here. So as I say here, I'll see you in the next video here.